Now we have Thank Chilla, who's, who's come over here from London, and she's going to talk to us about uh, automation, myths, and doubts. Hello. First question. The first question would have been, actually, do we have a team in the audience, a person called Tim? But actually, I learned the answer that we do. The first presenter was called Tim. Is there anybody else who is called Tim? Please, hands up. No. Right. This is not about that Tim. You will see why I'm, say why I'm saying this. Can I have the clicker, the please? Yeah. Can I have the clicker? I need to click. Oh. Right, so um, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today with you. Um, and I was here probably about eight, around April, around this time, um, in the same office, and I met Christian there, and Christian was telling me about all this. I know that they started organizing. I, was like, I said, okay, that's nice, fine. And, um, and I went back to London, and I started getting into network automation around last year, um, October. They and I realized there was no communities around network automation. So I started out a London network automation meetup group, but the actual the inspiration has come from that conversation with Christian. So thank you very much. Thanks for that. Um, today I'm going to talk about myths and doubts about network automation. That some of mine, some of the people I'm talking to, and they talk, shared those things with me. So this is Tim, and this is not that Tim. Um, and um, he is a traditional network engineer. Um, so I would like to do a little voting here. Can you put your hands up, please, if you c consider yourself a network engineer who hasn't done automation at all before, at all, nothing? A couple of people, not many. Who is Who did some network automation, but not necessarily full-time to a certain degree? Okay, that's more. Who is who's doing full-time uh, network automation? Okay. Excellent, a couple more. So this talk is about, um, is for those two first two groups. And if you have any, from the experienced ones, you've got any questions or, not questions, like ideas or opinions, please share. Right, so this is Tim, traditional network engineer, and, um, and he's going to be our main character today. Um, and if I walk up to Tim and ask him, are you interested in network automation? The typical answer is that I get is, yeah, yeah, I need to learn about Python. This is the typical line. And then I always go like, right, wait a minute. Because network automation isn't equal to Python. It's like when you, when you decide you're going to go into networking and you say, right, I want to go into networking. I need to know how to configure OSPF. This is like the, the, the parallel I can put down there because this is just one way to do things. This is just a tiny portion of the network automation range. And this is just one thing that you can do and you don't have to do necessarily. But it's a good thing as well. So Tim says, OK, Python is not, not network automation. Then what is it? I will have to find it out. Let's look it up on the internet. And it goes on and then starts finding articles about Python, Ansible, NSX, Saltstack, Puppet, Jinja2, Docker, AWS, Red Hat, Git, GitHub, Vagrant, OpenFlow, Stackstorm, Ubuntu, Napalm, Taylor for NSO, um, YAML, and OpenStack. And then he says, oh, I have no idea where to go now. And he's going to be sad. No, poor Tim. By the way, this is not just Tim, it's Chilla 2016. So I went through all of that and I came from the traditional network engineering background with a little bit of programming knowledge, but I went through all of that. Oops, can I go back? So um, people like Tim would say that network automation requires uh, many knowledge of many different systems that need to work together and deliver the end result. So they have kind of find, found themselves in a numb state where it's like, I, I need to do too much, I need to learn too much, and, and that's just too much. Um, and this is partially true, but when you started learning about networks, that doesn't mean that you knew all about the protocols from day one. 
and not even day two or week one. So, you know, you started out with the basics and this is what you need to do if you want to get into network automation. You start out with the basics, pick one thing which is probably will be good for something. It may be Python, it may be Ansible, it may be another thing. Just go and find your way around that one and try to be productive, try to find a problem which actually is your problem every day and solve that. And once you've done that, then go to the next step. Um, the other one is that I get quite often is that it would take longer to write a script than doing something manually. Who knows, quiz time, who knows who Gutenberg is? Okay, can you please tell me who Gutenberg is? Say again? By yeah, printing Bibles, thank you. This is the correct answer. Um, so do you know how he actually printed the Bibles in the beginning? Okay, we have one person, I will tell this now. And correct me if I'm wrong, this is what I just learned on the internet. Um, so basically he got letters and arranged them in the right format manually by hand, printed one page, printed a couple page, and then took another page and printed, with the put the, arranged the letters, printed another page. It took him three years to print 180 copies of the Bibles, which probably, and there was three people working on that full time. So probably you could say if they did it by hand, it would be roughly around the same time, just by an estimate. So wha what was the thing that was really huge about it? It enabled something to grow and, and build on top of this type of thing. And as you fine tune the processes, it got better and better. So you know, you write the script, it may take three times longer than you would done it manually. But the next time when you need to use this again, or five times, you already have a have a win in terms of execution time. And the other thing is you learn something. You learn something that you didn't know before, so you expanded your tool set, whatever is available to you to solve the next problem. Another doubt that I get, as a beginner, you need to invest time and energy in learning a tool before you realize that the tool doesn't deliver the results you expected. It's a very loaded doubt. The first thing I wanna highlight is expected. You're learning something new. You have expectations. That's a dangerous combination. Because, you know, if you want to learn something, you don't know what to expect. This is, this is what you want to find out, what, what you can actually get, with this, get done. If you put yourself under pressure, it might work for you, it might not. Um, it's just better to just start out with easy. You start get to know things, just to, to experiment what you can and cannot do with this thing. Um, and another thing, you know, I have a problem, I learned a tool, that didn't work. Tomorrow I have another problem, oh, I learned something yesterday that actually could work now. So this, this don't take it as a wasted time, uh, if you learn something that didn't quite fit, that will be good for tomorrow. And this is um, a very controversial topic, um, who should initiate this whole network automation phenomenon? Should it be come from the engineer itself? Or should the company actually push it from the top and provide the necessary trainings and facilities for the people to grow? And I think it's, a, it's not an either or, it's both. It should be coming also with company support and it should be also happening with the individual effort that uh, is put into by possibly in your spare time. But you know, if you wanna do a CCMP certification or a Juniper professional certification, will you have the time at work to work on this all day for weeks? Probably not, probably you have to do it on your free time. But why don't you do the same thing with network automation? Sacrifice so much of free time so you can be better at work. And yes, some companies are really good. We have a few examples here who would allow you and push you to do these better. But some companies are not there yet and maybe it's your job to, or your opportunity to show them that, hey, we do things like this, but how about we do something smarter? So it, you can help this process also to show and communicate and demonstrate what you, the whole company can win with automation. 
almost last slide. Um, there is a doubt that people say that the network engineer will be never a true programmer. Do, do, do they have to be? Or a software engineer will never fully understand networking. That's the other doubt. The typically, software person will say about the network person, and network person would say about that the software person. But what I can see here is that very small. There are very small software engineers who put their time and effort to provide the tools. Napalm is a good example. Many open source tools out there where proper software engineers will do the coding, and then the if the network engineer takes the initiative to learn to some extent that programming, they can use those tools. So they can actually start moving towards each other. And then they will have a common language to solve the problems easier and better. So my message for this talk, if you are a beginner or if you, if you still have like mental barriers to bake through, so it's the easiest thing to just get started with very, very small things and don't wait for somebody or some outside circumstance to push you through because you will have so much win in the end if you, you went through all of the cycles of learning. And sometimes a pain uh, when happens when you get out of your comfort zone. Thank you. Oh, um, do we have time? Yeah, we've, we've got a moment or two. So has anyone got any questions for Chila? It's a very interesting topic to actually get started uh, with network automation and where to begin. Hey, Rory. Um, hey, Rory. You mentioned a really good uh, slide at the start. Um, when you start to look into network automation, there is endless amounts of hits. How did you figure out how to take a direction from all the results in Google? Well. <laughs> Luckily, we have a great community in network automation. That there is a, a network to call Slack channel where you can always go so for some ideas and pointers where to start out. That's what was one of the things. Um, and it's difficult to say about specific problems. So if you if you if you have a problem, let's say um, you need to automate customer provisioning, let's say um, you can have an idea of like you need some sort of templates. You need some sort of form to be presented, and along those lines, you can find the technology which is the most suitable for you. Do you have any exact Im exact examples? What would you what would you like to? Because generally, automation is is about solving a problem. So then you need to find a problem first, so you can start moving towards the direction. Yeah. Anybody else? In that case, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sheila. Thank you. As always, if anyone's got any questions for any of the speakers, uh, feel free to just maybe go up and tag them after in the second uh, part of the evening, the social part of the evening. Um, just before we kick off with uh, Jose and Daniel, um, quick question, and please uh, excuse my French, but the last question of the evening is, en français, what is... What does RIPE actually stand for? First person to shout it out. Best pronunciation you can. <laughs> is that, is that <laughs> Phil here with Rezo IP European? Wait. OK, you win. <laughs> here you go. Fridge, fridge magnet and map. Checkbook and pen. <laughs> OK, so uh, let's hand.